Hi everyone, today I wanted to make a predictions video for the CIE IGCSE Physics 2025 paper and I'm looking at paper 4, the extended answer paper. So what sort of topics do I believe will come up and what sort of things do I think they'll ask you? Now, the first thing to be aware of is make sure you have all your variables learnt so that you can identify an independent variable, which is what you change, your dependent variable, which is what you measure, and your control variables, which is what you keep the same. Obviously, they'll ask you a lot more about this in the alternative to practical paper, paper six, but it is absolutely worth making sure that you can answer that in the paper four also. Obviously, with physics, equations are going to be very important. You've got to make sure you've got all those formulae learnt and do make sure you check units. So if they give you a time in hours, make sure you convert that to seconds. Obviously, remember that the unit for weight is newtons as opposed to kilograms. And if they're asking you to find weight or force, because remember, they both have the unit of newtons, you might need to use W equals mg. So weight equals mass times the gravitational force in order to change that into a force or weight value. Now you do need to know the value of G on Earth, it is 9.8. Another number it's worth learning off by heart is the, speed of, is the speed of all the EM waves, so those are the electromagnetic waves, including visible light, gamma, etc. Remember they travel at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum. Other equations you need to learn, remember refractive index equals sine I over sine R. Make sure you've got your magnetism equations learnt. And electricity always features quite heavily in these papers. So do make sure that you've got your equation linking. So do make sure you've got your equation linking voltage, current and resistance, charge, current and time. Remember all these equations feature in the specifications to so make sure you've gone through that spec, making a note of all the equations you'll need. Because remember the maths isn't that complicated, but obviously if you're inputting the numbers into the wrong... But, ob but obviously if you're inputting the numbers in the wrong place in the equations, then that will certainly upset your answers a little bit. So as I said, electricity is likely to come up. Do remember the direction of conventional current. It runs from the positive to negative terminal in a cell, whereas the flow of electrons runs in the opposite direction, from negative to positive. Remember your resistant rules state that in a series circuit, your total resistance adds up to your individual resistances of each component. Whereas in a parallel circuit, 1 divided by that total resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, etc. They do like to check that you understand that with the calculations involving electricity. Now, radioactivity, do make sure you know the difference between the alpha and beta decay equations so that you can complete any equations they give you. Remember, with alpha decay, you'll need to minus 4 from the mass number, 2 from the atomic number, Remember, with beta decay, the mass number stays the same, but the atomic number increases by one due to the increased number of protons. In terms of comparing alpha particles and beta particles, alpha particles are more highly charged. They have a heavier mass. Beta, being a fast-moving electron, has a lower mass and a lower charge. And do make sure you can specify their various penetrating and ionizing powers. Half-life calculations do come up quite a lot, so do make sure you've checked over that. So yeah, my biggest tips here really is to make sure you've got all those formulae learnt, that you know the standard units, that you can do any relevant conversions. Double check for the number of significant figures, the number of decimal places they're expecting. And remember, in your exam, they're annoying. They'll expect you to provide the appropriate unit. They do not provide you with units. So you need to know that the unit of momentum is kilograms meters per second. The unit of moments is newton meters. Remember the equation force equals change in momentum over time. People always forget. People always forget that equation. But yeah, good luck with your exam and let me know how it goes. Comment on this video specifically after exam so I can see how it went. And remember, I do have my all-in-one videos as well as my revision guide if you like the sort of answers I provide. My revision guide is available 
at swhlearning.co.uk in case you want to get hold of a copy, which is a PDF. So you'll get hold of that immediately.